Today we're going to look at the installation of this Newport P9000 heater in a 2017 Ram Pro Master. We'll run through some tests to see how well it performs, and then at the end I'm going to give you my thoughts on how well this thing does after three years of use. First I want to apologize to anyone that watched my first video. I fully intended to make a part two and did not mean to leave you with a three year cliffhanger. The bad news is that I didn't shoot any footage of the final installation. The good news is that I now have better insight whether it's worth your time, money, and effort to install one of these things in your van. Early on in my design phase, I knew I was going to have this heater, so I designed the layout of the cabinets to accommodate it. I built these columns on either side which gave me a place to mount the heater, but also to run electrical lines and mount switches and outlets. For the height of the heater, I wanted it as low as I could get it so that the heat from the chimney would radiate into the van while leaving plenty of room underneath for things to be put on the counter without bumping into it or blocking the fan. Running the chimney straight up would mean going through this roof beam, so I needed to bend the chimney just a little bit. I had an approximate location of where I wanted the chimney to exit and had a couple of mounts made that would give me a flat, strong surface on the roof to mount the cap. I also used the same company for the roof fan mount. There's a link to them in the description, and I highly recommend checking them out. I drilled a pilot hole in the inside of where I wanted the chimney to go. Then on the roof, I centered my mount on that pilot hole and traced along the inside of the mount. This gave me my line to cut on. Admittedly, this took a little bit longer than I would have liked. The idea is that this goes on there like that, and then vent goes on like that. The chimney is double walled. It pulls air in on the inside and exhaust goes out in the center. This means that it doesn't use any air inside the van for combustion. There are a couple of screws at the top to hold it in place. Finally, it was time to mount my fireplace. The fireplace attaches to this backing plate and it's the backing plate that actually attaches to my post. I was a little worried it wouldn't hold, but after 50,000 miles, all is well. According to the manual, this heater uses one pound of propane for every seven hours on low. For a 20 pound tank, that would be 140 hours or almost six days of continual use. For me, I knew I wouldn't need that much propane on board. I also didn't want to sacrifice the space with the 16 pound tank, so I went with the five pounder. I'm really glad I went with this choice. This tank gives me about 35 hours of continual use, which is perfectly fine for my needs. I built a little cubby for the tank that latches on with magnets and has some weather stripping to seal it up. I also have a line running out the bottom of the van to vent any propane that may escape due to a bad connection or the tank venting. On the inside of the cabinet, I also mounted a propane sensor that is wired into the always on 12 volt system. The propane line runs up behind the heater and right into the back. Then I wired in the 12 volt for the fan and I was good to go. Making fire is easy enough. Grab your lighter, open the door, push and then turn to low, push and hold, light, and then close the door. Hold the knob in for about 10 to 15 seconds until the thermal couple heats up. How warm can we actually make the van? set up my thermometer where my head would be if I were sleeping and let it run for about an hour. As you can see, it gets to be around 30 degrees above ambient, which in my van is pretty typical. Now, how hot is the heater itself? It gets pretty hot. After about an hour, we're at 130 degrees on the chimney in the upper part of the heater. Okay, we got the heater in, it works, but is it worth it? As with all things to do with campers, the way you want to use it will affect what you consider to be a must-have or a why bother. I knew I wasn't going to be camping in the winter, but I still needed a heater. And if I'm being entirely honest, the reason that I went with this one was because it looks cool. I wanted to be curled up next to the fireplace inside my van in the middle of nowhere USA. And it does look cool. If the door is open and someone walks by, they immediately start asking about the heater. 
it's a great conversation starter, usually with a demonstration. As to the heating ability, I would say I'm a little disappointed it doesn't heat the van better. But it's not entirely the heater's fault. My entire van is insulated with wool, but I didn't really go for maximum heat containment. I have a lot of windows, and I've done my best to try and cover those up with these wool insulated window coverings, but there's only so much you can do to battle thermodynamics. It also takes up valuable space. I could have put more storage here and where the propane tank goes. The fan is really noisy. As you can see, it's up around 55 decibels. I do have one other trick to try and heat the van, and that's radiant heat flooring. That's right, I got two radiant heat floor mats underneath where the kitchen area is. All you have to do is set the thermostat to five bacon. Combined, the mats only draw 100 watts, so we're not talking hot floors, but not freezing floors are awesome when you're making breakfast or just hanging out on a cold day. Even in summer camping, having the floors be 20 or 30 degrees above ambient, which might be 40 or 50 degrees, makes it feel warmer in the van, even if it's not. I love them, but they definitely do not heat up the van. This is one hour of running the floors with the heater on, so no difference. My standard practice is to wake up, turn on the floor, snooze for a bit, and then get up and start the day. I may be upgrading my heating mats when I redesign my electrical system this spring. That's going to make an awesome video, so please subscribe if you want to see how that turns out. So, the big question. Would I recommend this heater after three years of use? The answer? It depends. If you're looking for something with a little bit of wow factor that'll just take the edge off, this is for you. If you're concerned about space, if you need instant heat, and you don't want to deal with a separate fuel source, I would get something else. Do I regret installing this heater in my van? No. It provides enough heat to be completely useful, and I love the look of the fireplace. Well, that's going to do it for this video. If you liked what you saw, please do all those things that help out tiny little YouTube channels like mine. And if you have any ideas for things you'd like to see me do to the Aspen van, please let me know down in the comments.